everybody. Dino here in the hack shack on my back on the bench. Two dead phones here. One of them, I killed it. I did it. I got it wet. And anyway, long story, I got to do some work so I can pull the data from the bad one, put it on this one that I found on eBay, and then transfer the... Anyway, I'll explain it all. Keep watching. So here's the deal. This phone, my, uh, my droid... Turbo, Motorola Droid Turbo 2. I love this phone. It's got a really huge um, battery capacity. It's got the turbo charging, charges up really fast. And it's got the plastic OLED screen, really rugged. I mean, you can't hurt this thing. You run over it with a car and it won't hurt. It's not glass, it's plastic and it's OLEDs, low power consumption. Love the phone. They don't make it anymore. You can get them refurbished uh, and that's what I did here. But anyway, this one got wet when I was canoeing, Ugh, I had it out for a minute and I had a waterproof box, I was about to put it back in. Um, the dog intervened in the uh, canoe, tipped it sideways. I jumped out, phone was in the pocket before I could put it back in the otter box. It got wet and out in the field, I was like, wow, you know, it's still running, but if I can open it up, get the battery, whatever, don't think I can do that in the field. Anyway, I popped the screen loose around here and lift it up and oh, whoops, rip the ribbon cable right off. <laughs> I killed it. I did it. Look at that. I, oh, I totally butchered this phone. But you know what? They warranted it anyway. So uh, did my $140 deductible. Got another phone and it's it's white. But there it is. Um, but it doesn't have the data on there that I had on this phone. Why? Because I didn't. I never back this up as far as the uh, photos. I usually will, you know, weekly do that. And well. The ones from the canoe trip and a few other things on this phone I want back, but I can't get at the screen. I can't do anything with it. But it does turn on. When you turn on, you can hear the buzzer go. And before I switched uh, to the new phone, my service was still sending text messages. You could hear the alert sound, so I know it works. The motherboards are the motherboard is okay. So here's the deal: um, Android phones. Hook up a USB cable to this on the computer. It'll show that it's connected. There's something there, but you can't read any data. And that's because USB debugging is not enabled. So you need to do that on these phones before you can actually get at the data with a USB cable. So let's see, we're gonna go to the settings, which are right here. And we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom about phone. I'm going to tap about phone, scroll all the way to the bottom of that. All the way down here at the bottom it says build number. If you tap this seven times, you then are in developer mode. You become a developer on your phone. So it's, you know, kind of like tap your feet twice and go back to Kansas. Well, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But look, it says no need. You are already a developer. Somebody already did that. So if you want to be a developer, get into the USB debugging so you can hook your phone up, go to build number, tap it seven times, and then you're a developer, you come back here, you've got developer options now. Go in there, you've got all these options that go on like uh, desktop backup password, um, stay awake while charging, uh, all this other cool stuff. And uh, right there, USB debugging is connected. So if that's off, like that, you want to turn that on. And yes, we want to allow that. So that's how you enable the USB debugging. All right, so this phone I bought on eBay, 45 bucks because it's got these nasty lines on the screen, otherwise fully functional phone. Gonna take this one apart and take this one apart, put the motherboard from this one into this phone enable USB debugging and then I can get my data off this motherboard when I'm all done, put everything back in this phone, box it up, send it back for my warranty. Now let's get into the nitty gritty of how you get in this phone. Let's get started taking the phones apart. This is my um, smartphone toolkit that I just picked up off from Amazon. Really nice little kit. It's got some little flat uh, pry bars and whatnot, all kinds of them, plastic ones, little uh, styluses. Um, these, these are all Torx tips and screwdrivers. The Torx start at T4 and go up to, looks like T8. Um, this is from uh, DIY Tool. 
right there it is and there's the part number dt 2309 found it on amazon i think i paid around 15 dollars for it so uh, a good thing to have to take apart smartphones all right two um let's see let's identify this one this is the poor dead phone all right so let's get after that one first the first thing we need to do is take this rubber back part off underneath this rubber backing is where the t4 screws are i'm going to use my rework soldering uh, heat gun got it set at about 180 degrees and um, about the same as a a good hot hair dryer so what you want to do is warm this up which will help to uh, release the adhesive that's holding it to the back of the rear case of the phone. All right. Let's see what happens if I get in here with an exacto slice around the edge. Start to slice at a little bit of an angle here, right there in the middle looks like it wants to pop loose. Let's see if I can get this in there. There we go. If you get it hot enough, then all this sticky part releases completely from the plastic. Makes it easier on reassembly. Now there's a couple of little plastic covers that need to come off. Uh, this one here goes to the wireless charging. This one goes to headphone jack and vibrator motor. And these clips will lift right up. Do them with a pair of tweezers or a little pry tool of your choice. Okay. Now I can remove the 17 screws that are around the outside. As it turns out, the T4 in this kit that I bought, um, they mentioned this uh, in a couple places where I was reading about tearing this apart, that sometimes the T4s that come out of China um, compared to other T4s aren't the same size. This is a T5 out of this little kit from Lowe's Hardware, Cobalt brand, and it says T5 right there. And you know what? It it fits perfect so at least I think it does it feels like it's wanting to get in there let's see yep okay well let's take these 17 screws out the last screw is right here next to the camera lens kinda hidden get that one out Another silver one. There's four of those on the back of this all together. And there we go, the back comes away from the front. Take this and put it all to one side and next we focus on this. We need to get the battery out. Now that the tape is out of the way, we get these two screws that are on this bracket that holds everything uh, together in here and stiffens up the phone quite a bit too. We'll take that off. Now the connectors, there is a piece of gold tape right here that holds this connector together. So we're gonna lift that off and keep it. We'll just put it right here on the cable. Once the tape's out of the way, you can unlock this connector by flipping up that little black strip and then give it a pull carefully and out it comes and I'm already seeing on this some damage um, to this connector it's to the front to the screen in the front what led to the screen in the front it's right there a little discolored spot how about that? Okay, a couple more connectors. We've got one down here. It's just a simple pop-off style. Kind of like a Legos. Uh, then there's one here, I believe. 
Is that right? Yes. And another one over here, extension microphone thingy. That needs to be free. And now we can pop the battery out. Again, being careful to not puncture the battery. Can't emphasize that enough. Just be careful what you're prying against on the edge here. There's a couple ribbon cables to watch out for. And it's breaking loose now. And there it is. There's stripes on the back of it of uh, double-sided tape. Up in this corner is another cable that has to come loose. Right here. It's got a piece of tape on it. Same as the other one. Lift up on the little lever, pop it loose. and then this little board comes loose. Over in the other corner there is a little cable right here that will pop up off this jack and that now releases the motherboard. So this right here is where the goodies are. This is where the data is that I want to extract and back up to my computer to put on my new phone. So this is the one I'm going to put now into the other phone. We're going to do a transplant. Ooh. First thing we'll do is shut this phone down. Motherboard out of the donor phone with a good screen. And I left the battery in. You can pull the motherboard without taking out the battery. I kind of threw that in there. If anybody wanted to swap out a battery, then they would know how in this video. So that's my motherboard from my poor phone that I abused. Sad. So we'll drop that in here and get this functional and see if we can pull data all back together. My motherboard into a working screen and rest of the phone. So it's coming back up now on uh, my motherboard from my broken phone. I've got it popped apart here on the edge and I actually just manually pressed the power button. It wasn't quite lined up and since I got to take it all back apart, no sense in uh, wasting all that time trying to make it line up. Okay, that is indeed my screen. Let's go all the way down to about phone, all the way down to build number. One, two, three, little thing pops up. It says you are now four steps away from being a developer. Five, six, seven, seven, there we go. All right, you are now a developer, awesome. Now we go back into settings and we have developer options. We go down here to USB debugging, turn that on. Okay, there we go. I should be able to connect a USB uh, OTG cable here to the computer and pull data from the phone now. Okay, let's plug this in and see what we get. Should hear the uh, bleep noise. Okay. And look at that. Okay, let's see. XT1585. And it's just probably going to open in a browser window or prompt me to do so. But anyway. All right, thinking I might have to do a shutdown and restart here because I had one failed attempt already at uh, accessing this. So. Shut down, restart. Um, okay, so turns out, um, here's the deal. Uh, gotta go back to settings, developer options, scroll down, make sure that USB debugging, it's on. Keep scrolling down and we're gonna see, select USB configuration. Right now it's on media transfer protocol. Let's switch to picture transfer protocol and then up pops this yep let's just open that and look there's photos so that's what I was after mostly was that and so there they are that's how you have to get to the photos you have to set that protocol to picture transfer protocol PTP all right let's back this up well that's that all the data is backed up off from this motherboard and memory now I did a full factory reset on it and uh, 
All I gotta do now is take the guts out of this, put it back in the other phone, send it back, and I'm good to go. And I've got a spare phone. Once I put this one back together, all it needs is the SIM card dropped in, and it just instantly comes uh, a working phone. That's pretty cool. Um, so, just a couple quick reviews through there. Remember to enable USB uh, debugging and then in the type of transfer, switch back and forth a few times between the media and the photo. Eventually, you'll be able to read all of it. It's kind of like it has to shake hands first in one mode or the other, and then it's good to go after that. Anyway, hope this helped out. Anybody that had a Motorola Droid, they needed to take apart for whatever reason, and it's just kind of always cool to know that you can take things apart that seemingly are not take apart a wool. That's not really a word, but you know what I meant. And that little toolkit's pretty cool um, for 14 bucks, whatever, 15. Amazon, check that out. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for the donations, and be sure to like and subscribe. And, um, well, you know, till next time.